Hey guys, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well today. This is JL the July Lioness. So we're back in Create a World from The Sims 3 and we're going to make a world from scratch this time. No, no Bisquick. <laughs> um, so this is the screen that you open up to and you would hit the file menu and you would click on New World which drops down, but uh, my software didn't record the drop-down menus. But trust me, there's some drop-down menus and you pick out what world you want and how high and everything. This is a medium desert world 200. I think 200 is like the height and the depth of it. So if you want really high mountains, you would use 300. Oh, look, it looks like it's got hidden islands or something. <laughs> so here we are with our big tan square. <laughs> and I just, I'm going to put in some mountain ranges all around it, ring it, ring it in mountains. And I want to make like a, a tundra. I want this to be a cold world. And I think I can pull it off thanks to seasons. Uh, I think I can just set up the the season as always winter and um, the weather would just be snow so and it'd be interesting also to have the moon set on full all the time or I could have a regular cycle or whatever even that's pretty adaptable that'd be fun though because if the if it's uh if you don't have a garden, or if your garden's inside, then the zombies don't come and kill and get your plants. I hate that when they come. That's something supernatural, so annoying. <laughs> Those dumb zombies. But, um, you know, I'll use game packs because I like the stuff, more than, usually more than I like the gameplay. So I'm just figuring out what I want to do here, and I was wondering how I can soften that, those terribly sharp edges. So I'm just doing mountains, and it's like peeling the whole desert floor up off of that whatever blue layer is. So uh, the tan layer is the global layer, and obviously the blue one is one we cannot change, so that's just like the, I don't know. The magma layer, <laughs> whatever is underneath the, the molten lava core of the earth or something. <laughs> it just makes me think of the flat earthers with the corners and everything. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, but they I don't think they think the world is a big square like this. It seems to be like elliptical or oval shaped or something or maybe it's even like um, not really flat but kind of concave or something I don't know exactly I haven't looked into the flat earth theory I've been looking into all the other stuff like QAnon <laughs> well that's that's some of that stuff Ooh. QAnon and Twin Flames and I've always looked in, been interested in paranormal stuff, like ghosts and stuff. And of course, you know, we're in the tribulation. You guys realize that, right? So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, just put everything together. Uh, pick one. But this was fun to do. My internet went out for about an hour, and I heard my neighbors talking outside with, I guess, the cable guy or something. And they said, well, I reported it right away. I, I called this, that very minute went out. So I was like, okay, well, that's taken care of. <laughs> One of the advantages of being in an apartment. And so it was fixed within about an hour. Actually, I don't know if he still lives here, but there used to be a cable guy who actually lived in this complex, and he was the one that installed my cable. So that's handy dandy. So I wonder if they just went and banged on his door and said, Hey, the cable's out. He probably knew. <laughs> the internet's out. 
He probably knew he was probably hiding under his bed. <laughs> oh no! Here we go again. Yeah, you know, 8 o'clock at night, I can't get a moment's peace. So we're just doing the mountains, and yes, it's, I guess it's normal for that funny kind of a wall to come up whenever I do mountains along the edge. It must be, I don't know, measuring the height or somehow. It's just a, a graphical thing because, yeah, there you see the corner. So basically, I'm just kind of trying to round off the edge of the world. I think it'd be funny if somebody just put a big fence along the edge. <laughs> I'm not sure you can do that though because then you'd have to do it and it edit in game I mean I guess you could just put a if you go to edit in game don't put in mountains or anything but go into edit in game and put a fence along the perimeter of the, the world and then just set up your um, the routing <laughs> They can go all the way up to the fence, <laughs> I guess. Oh, I should try that sometime. Now, all of these mountains look kind of spiky, and I don't really want spiky mountains. But I don't want plateaus either, so I'm just kind of learning. That looks kind of thin. But again, I don't know the scale. I don't know how big these mountains are in comparison to the Sims. And I don't think I will know until I start to put my roads down. So, that's the thing with the Sims. And even when I'm building houses, I'm not exactly sure of the, um, of the scale. So I found that one of these terrain paints looks almost like white, so I thought, well, that'll make it look somewhat snowy anyway, at least more snowy than this tan color, so I proceeded to paint everything this color. too spiky um, but they are just backdrop just to keep you from falling off the edge so with mountain ringed by mountains you can tell this is not going to be like an island world But I think I might be able to get houseboats into it anyway, and you'll see later on in the video why I say that. Having a sip of Coke. Eventually I got smart and made my brush bigger when I realized I was going to paint the whole world this color. Let's see, what's the opacity? 100? Okay, that's good. I just need to make my brush <coughs> as big as possible. Here we go. Nope, not yet. snowy looking. I think to get an actual snow file you have to download it from someplace and you have to be careful of how it tiles so that it looks really like snow. 
So I figure I let the game do most of the work and let it snow on itself. Make it, it would make snow in game. Yeah, it wasn't even painting. I just was sort of clicking on it and it was working all right, I guess. <laughs> that does look a bit more snowy, tundra-like, I guess. Not very interesting on the interior, but we'll see soon a bit more. More interest is coming. But yeah, this was a fun thing to do, and once I got to the uh, point where I was kind of done, the internet was back on. Hooray! So I figured I'd turn this into a video and upload it. So, um, not much to do with this quick county anymore. I'm having rabbit holes that, that um, they can't go to, so you just have to kind of tweak them, move them around a little bit. I actually moved the grocery store to a whole different lot, because that just, the poor things couldn't get to the store. <laughs> So now I'm kind of darkening up a bit and trying to make it look a little more three-dimensional. I wanted to make them look kind of snow-capped, but I don't think it's going to... I don't think I can accomplish that. But maybe in the game, it will look more snowy. This is just off in the distance anyway. So basically, it's kind of going to be like a basin that they live in. Not a lot of hills except for one major, one major feature. <laughs> so I was trying to make this look kind of snow-capped, but then I also wanted... It was going on, the opacity was kind of low, so it was looking kind of like a watercolor, which I like, actually, but it takes a minute for it to actually show. So there's a, like a thin watery, watercolory coat, and then you can kind of layer it on, which is nice. But I wanted it dark at the base, and then lighter as you go up towards the top, but the uh, peaks that were further behind needed to be quite dark so that they would visually recede and they'd have some shadows and stuff. So you want the foreground to kind of pop out. I wish you could have added some more, I don't know, orangey tones or something. You know, like the painted desert. Supposedly, supposedly we have rainbow mountains now. Um, you can Google that. I heard there were some in Arizona, Peru, I think China. There are pictures of them. You can find them online. Like I said, just Google it. That would have been neat if I could have done that in game. Purple and green. But they just give you these kind of tans and grays. And I guess uh, I guess I could go to like mod the Sims or something, and maybe get some other texture files at some point. But we'll see. I do have a name in mind for this place. I'm thinking it's going to be, like I said, a snow, a snow world. So I won't have to give them summer clothes. 
<laughs> lots of long sleeves. And everybody will have a, a husky or a malamute or long haired cats. And <laughs> I guess I'll have to make a Santa Claus family or something. <laughs> So it's becoming more and more realistic. It's, a, it's just sort of like 3D modeling, I guess. So you just kind of are painting over stuff as you see it. Um, I don't didn't have any. Um, you know, I just had an idea in my head. I didn't write anything down started playing with it intuitively. I just wanted to try and to do a tundra. Which actually does have a little bit of moss and stuff anyway, but so tiny bits of lichen I guess, but that's sort of a bluish green, not brass green. So here's where I thought I'd add some interest. I'm playing... I decided to add a spine down here. A ridge. And then I can split up the world so that maybe one side will be the city, the town, and the other side will be residential. It's City Skylines! <laughs> I wonder if that's this gave them the idea to create SimCity. But you don't terraform SimCity, do you? I've never played it, but um, I have played City Skylines, and I stink at it. I can never get the roads down right. And I don't really want to build a city. I like this. I like building the land. I'm a woman of the land. So yeah, we've got a nice ridge of mountain, a nice mountain ridge going through the map to add some interest. And a nice valley with water. And we'll see if I can get a road to get through those mountains. I have no idea how big they are. I'm just sort of painting that in. That's the valley tool. area some more. That's the, I think that's the, that's the smooth tool. You can see what tools I'm checking. Selecting that, that one is flat and gentle that I'm using right now. I'm trying to flatten out a spot for the road to go through. <coughs> and I have to dig down deeper to get through that, like make make a mountain pass. Get it 
low enough and flat enough before it actually hits water. It's also sort of rubbery. flattened terrain. So you go in one direction and then you come back the other way and it kind of undoes what you just did. <laughs> That's just a rough, rough sketch. So now I'm playing with the valley tool. I'm a valley girl. Here we go. Lunar Lakes. Oops, can't see anything. Tool's too small. Brush is too small. Using a, a brush to create a valley. Hmm, <laughs> who'd have thought? Is that what God did? Yeah, we're going to make a big old lake, and they can live all around the lake, and they can have their houseboats on the lake. Hello. And then they can go across the mountain ridge for their jobs. How about them apples? Is this a good plan? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> going to have to have like a It's a fairly like a ring road, I guess. Yeah, around the lake there. That's a nice round lake. I might make it. Oh, I did make it more irregular. Yes, and of course it is fed by something. And how else did it form? So it goes through the mountain. Just my yeah, that's my gentle valley tool. So if I did a deep valley, a narrow brush, I could probably get really into some deep water in the middle of that gorge. So that make it more interesting. And I can get a bridge across it or something too. That'd be fun. Yeah. So now, of course, what is feeding this? Of course, it's coming from the ocean. That shark toothed rock right there. That's a landmark, that funny rock sitting there, right at the edge. Maybe I'll paint that uh, differently from the rest of the mountains so it stands out. So yeah, there's your feeder right down there. It's where that one lone rock is sitting in the water. So this has been me, JL. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you again soon. Have a good night.